Hey everybody, welcome back to Winter War 2015. We've got Game 3 of Dynasty Gaming going up against the Royal Knights Peru. The winner moves on, the loser unfortunately eliminated from the tournament. I'm your host, Wolf Dota. If you've been enjoying the cast so far, you can feel free to follow me on Twitter and Twitch, both at Wolf Dota, as well as you can check out my YouTube channel for any VODs that uh, you may want to watch. Oh, feel free to check it out. Also, a shout out to LegionBattles.com, as well as Dota Store Peru for sponsoring Winter War 2015. And with that, let's get into the draft. Storm Spirit banned out this time by Dynasty Gaming, as well as the Timbersaw. Interesting choices there. The Sven and the Bristleback both received bans. So first time Dynasty Gaming don't ban the Meepo. And we'll see if maybe it makes it through this time. A little bit interesting here. Maybe Royal Knights Peru pull out something fancy. They're going to go with the first pick, Dazzle. Not afraid at all of the Axe coming out, maybe. So we'll see what Dynasty want to do with their draft. Or which direction wants to go, but it's interesting that uh, the four highest game impact heroes have been banned out by uh, each team, respectively. And that's one of the interesting things about casting a best of three is you get to see these tiny little meta shifts within a best of three, even. Like, first game, neither the Timbersaw, Storm Spirit, or the uh, Sven were touched, but the Bristleback was used and played incredibly well. Game two, the Sven was doing a terrible amounts of damage, and the Storm Spirit and the Timbersaw were kind of wrecked. So both teams switching up their bands here accordingly and uh, trying to eliminate what the other team might want to do, preventing them from using the same draft twice. So interesting nonetheless. Dynasty Gaming spending a lot of time thinking about that second pick after the Witch Doctor to open it up. And we'll have to see what they want to do with that. But nonetheless... I wouldn't be surprised to see an axe at all. They could do something really cheeky and aggressive. Go with like an axe, shadow fiend, or shadow demon, witch doctor. But uh, who knows? I st instead, they're going to go with the lich pick. So, strangely, they pick up a very defensive support. And Royal Knights Peru, they're going to be uh, breathing a sigh of relief as they themselves get the axe. And... Now they've got that true aggressive, so you can go in, get the disruption off, have Axe run in underneath, and then once the hero pops out, hit him with a weave as well as the call. Hopefully get a spin or two, and the aggression is unreal coming out for them. But we'll see how it goes. Brewmaster banned out by Royal Knights, so taking rid of, getting rid of another hero that was very effective in the first game. And we'll see what... Uh... I see gaming want to do. Ten seconds to go. And as far as Royal Knights go, as far as what I would ban out by them is... Are they going to go with the silencer? I was going to say anything else that would go well in this aggressive try lane, which is kind of tough, because I think any other secondary stun would be really, really effective. Any sort of range stun. Like, Venge would be very strong with this one. Royal Knight's going to ban out the Doom, so getting rid of another, another all the cores that Dynasty Gaming have run and run well, except have been banned out, except for the Slark so far. Just yeah, funny nonetheless. The Royal Knights, I still think uh, maybe if they picked up Avenge or a Lion, uh, probably Avenge would be a little bit better. PA is going to be the one banned out though, and now it's Dynasty Gaming. They can kind of go with whatever they feel. They need some large team fight. Like, they've got this Witch Doctor ulti and the Lich ulti, but they don't have anything. I think Chronosphere would be really good here. They need to pick up the Void. Maybe get a good Chrono off, have the Lich ulti bounce through once or twice, or something along those lines. Or uh, maybe the Tidehunter for the off lane, Or both, honestly. I think it's kind of what they have to do. The only problem is they're going to have a tough time, and especially if the Royal Knights run an aggressive try lane, or any sort of aggressive lane, the Lich is not something you want when you're going up against somebody aggressive. Lich is best in, up against passive lineups that don't want to go aggressive and just want to farm. Because he denies them that farm and provides his team with extra experience as well as decent creep equilibrium. So we'll kind of have to wait and see. But nonetheless, as they're thinking about it, they got 50 seconds left on the shot clock, as it were. We'll see how it goes. The uh, Tidehunter is going to be the pickup, so they go with that. 
not too surprised by that at all. Um, called it out, kind of. But easy pick up there. And so I think, depending on this pick right now, if Royal Knights, if they grab, like, uh, who could farm the, the safe lane by themselves pretty easily up against the Tide Hunter? And pretty much anybody ranged. Like, maybe, um, maybe a Drow Ranger. You know, something like that. Um, you can zone them out pretty easily. I think Legion Hunter wouldn't be too bad. They're going to go with the Skyrath Mage, though, again. Both teams valuing this support quite heavily. They've been picked up in all three games, and... I don't know, man. I just... I'm not really feeling the Skyrath Mage. I think he just lost both games, actually. They, uh... Yeah. He, Royal Knights had him the first game, and then... Dynasty game, and got him the second. He's lost both, so... I'm not too sure about that. I think a better support. I think a different support might have been better, like the Shadow Demon or something along those lines. And Death Prophet's finally going to make it through. Banned out in both previous games. The Royal Knights they can pick up one last whatever hero they want here, mid laner or their core. And with that, we'll know whether they're going aggressive or not. I mean, there's always a little bit of ambiguity. Teams can run things in different situations than I would or what than I would think of. So it's. Interesting, nonetheless. Um, we'll look to see... I, as far as who would farm solo up against the Tide pretty effectively. Anybody ranged, I think, would be alright. Or uh, with a lot of magical damage. Um, I still think Drow Ranger would be pretty good. You give him a lot of burst damage, the silence would be pretty effective. Tide blinks in, she gets it off really quick. It has a very quick cast time. They're going to go with Puck in the mid lane, though. Actually pretty good against Death Prophet, I would imagine. Phase shift the uh, Crypt Swarms, if you wish. And uh, just a lot of mobility and whatnot. Sorry for the yawns. I'm not sure where they came from. But uh, either way, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Juggernaut's going to be the final ban here. That was a hero who could have gone solo up against the Tide. It's not the greatest for him as the Anchor Smash goes through and does reduce his damage. But it is an option that they can do if they want to. Um, I still think some arranged core for Royal Knights would be best. Faceless Void's going to be the final ban. Probably a pretty good call. Nice game. I'm going to look to pick up a new safe laner now. Uh, they could run, maybe run Death Prophet in the safe lane or pick up a hero and try and go aggressive. I'd say going aggressive with a Lich, I think, is a terrible choice. Um, what would their safe lane farmer be? Ember Spirit would be really bad. Silence out by the Puck. Jay's banned, Juggernaut's banned, Fist's Void, Sven banned. Wraith King's an option. Troll Warlord. How have I forgotten that hero already? He was, has been picked up so much recently in a lot of this major the major games. We'll have to uh, gonna wait, see how that goes. I like the pickup as well. Uh, he's very strong early. Can fight. The Whirling Axe is very good, providing that mischance. And then the extra move mobility from his toggle. Just little things like that. Ten seconds to go. But uh, Royal Knights Peru, they've got their final choice here. Troll actually would have been a pretty good pickup up against the Tide, too. Uh... Drow, what are other? They could go solo carrier Wind Ranger if they wanted to. That wouldn't be awful. Um, get some farm maybe up against the Tide Hunter to go for maybe a Blink and a Maelstrom. They're gonna go with the AM though. So looking to go toe to toe against the Troll Warlord, but I'm not sure I like that at all. They've got the Science and the Death Prophet, the Coconut. From the Witch Doctor, his ulti is um, physical damage, Tidehunter's Ravage, and then Troll Warlord, if he can close and get a bash, it's going to be not great. But we'll see how it goes. But either way, introducing the teams on the Royal Knights, the Radiant side, we've got Zero playing the Anti-Fun. The Axe is going to be handled by Ram Potato. He's going to the offlane again. Did a good job there last time. Kazuki is going to be on that Puck. Daniel is going to be playing the Royal Knights. And Antares, he's going to be on the Skyrath Mage. For the Dire Dynasty Gaming, we've got El Capo 2 playing the Witch Doctor. Leo Jim is playing the Death Prophet. 
Oh, and they're actually going to find the AM, who quickly blinks away. Tidehunter is going to be held by Salem. And Troll Warlord is going to be played by P-Red. And the Sad Face is going to be on the Lich. And honestly, I'd be pretty sad if I was on Lich as well. They drop. A, they do get a sentry down, but it's not on the bush. So they're going to have to eat some trees to, uh, to find this. Unfortunately, they're not going to go for it. Oh, top lane. What's going on here? Puck? Nope. Not going to trade. Looks like each team's going to be able to get a, uh, a rune if they want. Oh. And I forgot the overlays. Shit. And they're wrong. Uh. Oh, well. One game. That's too bad. Looks like I'm getting tired. This will probably be my last game for the night. I've got the option to cast a couple more, but I'm thinking I'm who is sleepy with all the yawns and the overlays I've already been forgetting. So, might be it for the night. We'll have to uh, wait and see how I feel, though. Maybe after a bit of a break, I'll be up for it. But, enough about that. We're into this game. Lane's working out pretty standard, not too surprised. Um, I thought they could have gone aggressive here if they'd picked a different support, but Skyrath Mage, I just don't like the hero right now. He doesn't really do anything a lot of the time not neither team is going super aggressive and uh it's not quite there axe in the offlane is gonna have a pretty tough day though he can get zoned out very easily by the lich and the witch doctor gonna eat a blast and he's actually gonna run in get a helix off but that's about it he's got a lot of regen so he can be aggressive here but he's got to be careful oh the coconut's gonna bounce back to him that's gonna be your first blood that quick that effective that coconut though and with that, first blood going the way. Who I didn't catch who picked it up, but it was the Witch Doctor. A final right click coming up from him, able to get that. And Axe, fortunately, feeds away first blood. Tidehunter, in the meantime, sitting a lot further back. Or sorry, sitting for a little further back and doing a little bit better of it. Not going aggressive in there. Axe just tried to man mode a little bit too hard. And uh, just uh, going to tell fix. <laughs> but uh either way they're gonna look to go oh pause comes out a little bit of lag spike coming out for him unfortunately and well wonder what that's all about unfortunate though that uh, some problems are being had i think it's about now that i fixed the overlays i'm just watching on the twitch thing and it should be going away any second. There it is. All good. Zero says they need a second. Still lag. So that's always unfortunate. There's not a lot you can do about that. Oh, looks like it's cleared up and they should be good to go. But what, back to what I was saying is Ram Potato, he's going to have a really tough time up here. Patrol's got the magical damage between Whirling Axes and then the slow as well. Lich has the slow and is going to be pulling the creep wave further back. Witch Doctor is actually just going for a... Got a stack off as well. So we're going to pull that. And oh, they used both sentries. And they're both in range. And I click. That one's definitely in range. And I think this one is as well. There it is. But they just didn't eat down underneath the trees. So a little bit unfortunate there. Not sure where that one went. They'll probably have to watch the VOD. Oh, Tidehunter takes a lot of damage. Animage is going to blink forward. They don't have the, any slows though. Not enough damage came out. Skyrath Mage. Oh, nope. Stick's going to be there. And they didn't have a slow from the Dazzle there to help out. So Tidehunter not going to go down. Stays alive and going to be pretty happy with that. Axe now level 3 though. So even though they, even if the Creep Wave does push underneath the tower, it's not a big deal. Patrol, he's just uh, cleaning up creeps here. Actually going to farm away. He's gone 1-1-1. One, 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 and he's taking a lot of damage here. Not cleaning up those creeps too fast at all. A little bit unfortunate there. He's going to go for an Aquila and Boots probably, and then maybe into a Helm of the Dominator's pretty standard build. Control. Very aggressive hero. A lot of fun to watch. And uh, I'd say overall, probably a pretty strong hero. He's got to be careful though. I guess he's not going to die from this, but it's just like... Boy. Well, Axe wouldn't give to be over there to throw out a Battle Hunger. But he's forced too far back by the Lich. Tanking creeps underneath the tower. Getting some spins off. Now going to go. Doesn't go for... Oh... Very late call, unfortunately. Lich is going to take a lot of damage from that. Probably going to take out its full duration. Troll has salved up. And... Going to back off. 
Tidehunter, staying alive up here, level 4. Both tied with the axe. Anti-mage, as far as farm, is leading the CS. So, even though only slightly above that troll. That said, he did get a lot of jungle farm, which uh, so kind of inflates his number a little bit. Not worth quite as much gold or experience, but nonetheless, the number is about the same. And he's got one more point to put wherever he wants. As usually, you see the uh, the one... T oh, the satyr comes through, gets in, in on the action there. Not going to get any kills, but... Up some low. Witch Dog? Sorry, Death Prophet, how are you doing here? Uh, Death Prophet's doing all right. Puck, not faring quite as well, which is unsurprising. Oh, Axe on the top lane, taking a lot of damage, and he's going to go down. Oh, the troll! Is he going to drop? He does! The Puck with the rotation. Orbs through, and phase shift away. Has that haste rune, throws out the coil, and needs one more right click. Not going to get it. Actually going to go down himself. Witch Doctor with that heal. Too strong, keeping himself alive. Had the sticks if he needed it. And Troll goes down, but they get two. So a little bit unfortunate there. Actually a two for... Was that two for two overall? Yes, it was. Let's well, drop too quick. And Tide, is he going to be in trouble? No, he's not. Dazzle's now got two points up in Poison Touch. So it does have that extra slow if they need it. But... And probably won't. Skyrath Mage... I'm only level two. Going for that another pull. And uh, we'll see. Axe going for the harass. Not going to matter. It's just going to frost blast to creep down. And they can start sieging the tower a little bit here. Troll can sit in range form and just get a couple stacks of fervor and throw some axes. Axe is going to get slowed down. Taking a lot of damage here. A lot of right clicks as well. Death Prophet pops royalty and looking to do some damage to the tower. Only level 6 though. Which, you know what? I think if you're going to take your ulti at level 6, like before, I can set it not at 10, 11. Use it as soon as you get it, if you can. And what's like, so many Death Prophets, they get their ulti at 6 and then they don't use it until they're level 11. And it's like, well, you could have popped it 4 times and it would have been fine. So it's, I don't know, it's just a little pet peeve of mine that I see. Entry blows at the rune. Death Prophet should be able to pick it up. And Crypt Swarm, not going to be there. But Death Prophet picks up a Irune. Oh, Axe on the top lane goes down. Unfortunately, I didn't. I was watching the Troll in the puck mid, but Troll, he's now got that Aquila and his boots picked up. He can go for whatever he wants. Actually going for the two, the one two two. That extra point in Fervor, I guess. Eh, maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Not too sure. The Coconut comes through. They're looking to push this tower down very quick. They're going to clean up the creeps and... Yeah, maybe look to bring it down. They've got another creep wave in the area immediately. Axe is TPing back up. So we'll have to see if they want to go. He throws out the call. Just going to provide himself with a little bit of armor. And Troll is just going to start chipping away. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't look like it. Axe pulls the creeps back and is just going to clear them out. And that's one nice thing Axe can do. is He can pull the creeps back behind the tower and just helix them down without, without re any real fear. But now there's a catapult wave, and they're going to clean this up very quick, and the tower will drop with on this one, unless there's some rotations up here. Axe, I don't think he can just stay up here against the combination of the three of them. Lich, or Dazzle's almost level 6, almost has that, or sorry, Witch Doctor's almost level 6, almost has the Death Ward. Troll's got the, almost got the 6 as well. Death Prophet picks up his phase boots. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Which, with that level 3 Frost Blast. Death Prophet's rotated bottom. Gonna look for the Anti-Mage. Those are the Quip Swarm. The Gush connects as well. Anti-Mage blinks away. She's got her ulti. Not gonna use it yet. Just t chipping away with the DD rune. Up top, this is gonna be the Death of Tower. Axe wants to go in there, but he can't. He's gonna get slowed down. Oh, another slow comes out as well. The, the Death Ward and a Coconut bounces through. Troll comes in with the Axes and a one right click and picks him off. Bottom lane, looks like they're going to maybe dive, maybe not. The Prophet's thinking about it, not going to go. Does have the silence, though it's only three seconds at level one. And she's going to pop her ulti behind the tower. And those are the signs. She does connect on the AM, but that's not going to really do a whole lot. just going to delay things. Tide does have Ravage, not going to throw it out. And he takes a fair bit of damage, actually. And they're just going to back off. Death Prophet can now rotate in, attack the tower, get the ghosts going on it. And... They're just forcing multiple fronts. Witch Doctor's rotated in. The Coconut's going to go through. Not going to bounce once, but that doesn't matter. They pick off the Dazzle. And with that, 
they get another nice kill going their way. Animage still hiding out in the trees. They know where he is, but there's not a lot he can do up against these four, and the tower is taking a lot of damage. It's going to drop as well. It's going to be the second tower down. Oh, Animage is going to get spotted out. Tide does not have Ravage. Which is going to just make sure he goes away, and the fort comes out. And Witch Doctor picks up the, another tower. Picks up the set kill on the second tower. Troll Warlord actually going for a Shadow Blade. So Pred actually really enjoying the Shadow Blade. Picked it up on Slark as well. Thought it was a little weird, but worked out for him. And now he's going for it again on Troll. And on Troll, I think it's a little better. You can get that from from Stealth hit right into the Whirling Axes and the Slow. And it is an immense amount of burst damage. You pop your Battle Transfer on top, get a Bash maybe. And it's a pretty easy kill. Oh, Witch Doctor, he's caught out. He is in a terrible, terrible place. He's going to be sad. Animage finishes him off with a Mana Void. And Animage not doing too bad as far as farm. Still leading the CS, but he's a little lower in levels than the Troll. Troll's level 7. Animage is only level 6. But he does have... Uh... Animage does have his Perseverance coming out. He's about 1,200 away from that Battle Fury, which isn't terrible timing by any means. But I think if he... Uh... He had a little bit more support bottom. It might have been all right. Death Prophet looking for the puck. Not gonna be able to find her. And they're just gonna back off. Axe is in the area though. Death Prophet bottles up a haste rune, and yeah, there's not a whole they can do against her now. Oh, Hero of Poison Sting coming out on someone, but it looks like the Lich is gonna be the one in trouble. Maybe, maybe not. Dream Coil comes out. The Axe is there. He gets the dunk. They're looking for another one. There it is. Make it a double. He's going to have the Ravage comes through, cleans up one. The Axe is looking for some spin, or spinning a couple times. Not going to be a whole lot. Troll comes through, looking for a kill, and Puck's going to get Shallow Grave. Dazzle's going to drop down. They need one more Axe. The Puck with a very nice orb away. Still dropping very low. And the Coconut's good. Oh, yeah, you can't disjoint the Coconut. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work out like that. Axe, the Tomahawks, they fly through. And Pred with a double kill. Finishes off that Shadow Blade, and... They're going to back off. Animage the whole time sitting down bottom. Trying to... He's almost got... Uh, he's 400 gold away. He's almost got his Claymore. And it's going to be about a... Probably a 12 minute Battle Fury by the time he gets it out to him. But it was a good fight coming out from DG. You're going to be happy with that. And maybe look to push the mid lane now. Death Prophet pops royalty for the third time. And going to keep pushing away. Tidehunter is going very aggressive. Forcing the back. Has a Blink Dagger at about 11 minutes in. He's just kind of soaking some damage, unfortunately, but not too worried about it. As they're going to get another tier 2, and this push strat's working out very well for DG. And they need this anti-mage. He's starting to try and, he's trying to creep skip. And he's got enough for the claymore. He buys it, so just needs to get it out to him and he'll have it. But trying to cut the cut the tower and uh, doing not a terrible job of it. But there's a smoke back looking for him. Maybe they go for Roshan, maybe not. Anti-mage, he's still in kind of a rough place. They need to get the Death Prophet Silence onto him. Lich is there with a the Frost Blast. Where is he going to go? He gets the last hit on the tower. Whirling Axes come through. He does not have a TP though. He Quelling Blades out. Oh, you maybe should have stayed. He jukes into the trees. Get, goes to Blink again. Gets Silence. And now Troll hitting very hard. The Crypt Storm is not there. He, the Silence wears off. He blinks away. They know where he's at. And are they going to be able to get there? Tide Hunter. Oh, the Axes come out. They provide the vision. One more hit. And the Coconut bounces through. That's going to finish him off there. So he buys a little bit of space and time. Gets the tower. But in the end, he does drop. So, tough plays coming up for him. Didn't have that TP. Wasn't able to get out. He has a TP on him. He's home scot-free after that. But, unfortunately, just not quite there. Looks like they're going to try and defend their mid lane. They can go for Roche pretty quick, too, if they want. That troll just needs to pick up a Vlad's or a Helm. And Roche on easy for him. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Which doctor? He's going for an Ags rush, so. Yeah, yeah already got the point booster. pretty tanky. Andy Mage. He's got his Battle Fury now. Gonna look to just start split pushing like mad. Axe needs to finish his Blink Dagger and start doing some work. Tidehunter has finished his, although it is on Brown Boots. But he can go for the Blink Ravage, and at this point, that's what matters. So if they try and group up again and maybe push a tier 2, if there's a grouped up defense, they can go for it. Oh, trolls rotating through. Stealth up. They're going to look for a kill. They're going to maybe spot the anti-mage. I don't... Oh, two ships passing in the night. Their vision doesn't go really too far past here. Dazzle drops a ward. Unfortunately, that might be on the uh, the wrong side of the rock. Might actually block that camp. Oh, I hear an axe. He throws out a call. And that's a Witch Doctor taking a lot of damage. The coconut bounces through. Hits the creeps a couple times. An axe goes down. Picked off. 
Troll Warlord getting that kill. Now on a mega kill streak. Sitting at 5, 1, and 3. And with that, they're thinking, hey, free, easy tier 2. He throws out the axes, looking to go. Ravage comes out. It connects onto 2. But do they want to go high ground? They do. The Lich out goes through. Only hits once. And they're already diving into the past the tier 2s. Oh, the Shallow Grave comes out. Witch Doctor pops out the... Witch Doctor is going to go down. Throws out the Maledict. But Dazzle's going to sav up. He's going to be fine. Both taking a lot of damage from the tower. He goes down to the Dream Coil. Oh no, they got a way too aggressive on that dive, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to make this work. Dream Call comes up from the, or sorry, Orb comes up from the puck, that's going to be enough to force him back. Axe has respawned, doesn't have that Blink Dagger yet, but Skyrath Mage is coming back, and because of that dive, if they hadn't dove that, they could have just easily cleaned up that tower and gotten the tier, th tier 2 and been on their way. Instead, they got way too greedy and unfortunately ended up feeding away their troll kill, who was on a mega kill streak. And they also lost the Witch Doctor in the end. They didn't even get the Dazzle. Nice play from him, though. Saving the Shallow Grave until they were already committed a little too deep. And, uh, Ram Potato. Almost got that Blink Dagger. He really needs that. And he means doing a good job farming. Keeping everything pushed out on the bottom lane. Trying to catch up. He's got his treads now. So, able to tread swap and blink around as needed. And, uh, we'll see how that goes. But Tide's person, oh, oh no, it just on creeps. Smiley or sad face, he's not working a whole lot. The Death Prophets almost got the Yules, getting pretty close. Which doctors, he's got at that point booster still, and I guess he's got Arcane Boots. Actually, pretty fed for 15 minutes in on a support like that. Not doing too shabby at all. He's higher net worth than the offlane axe on the other team, so. Actually going to be pretty happy. Dazzle's going to be able to hobble away. Shadowblade comes out from the troll. They're going to be looking for the anti-mage or the puck. We'll see if he's able to find one. If he opens up with the uh, the hit from stealth and gets a bash, pretty solid. But Stealth's going to wear off. 13 seconds on it. Anti-mage is going to get spotted out. And they throw out the axes. They know where he went. He's down here. Do they want to blow Ravage? It's on cooldown. Unfortunately, not able to get a bash. Hit him once, but wasn't enough. Death Prophet was not in range for the silence, and so TP was, or sorry, the blink TP was very easy to pull off. Axe now has his blink dagger completed up, so maybe look for them to get a, be a little more effective in these fights. Score seven to twelve. All in all, not doing too bad, but nonetheless, we'll have to wait and see. And Pered, he's doing all right. The dire my once mine that knocked out. El Capo, what's he doing? Oh, never mind. I hear a gush. A Ravage comes out, connects on the AM. The Shallow Grave's there, though. The Call as well. Only connects on one. And I think this axe might be going down. Never mind. The Puck comes through. He goes for the Duck. Unfortunately, misses it. They're gonna not going to get the Tide Hunter right away, but they end up going two for two overall. And make that 3 for 2 as the troll comes through. The puck gets stunned up. Maledict's there. Troll Warlord throws out the axes. They connect. One more Tomahawk. There it goes. Triple kill for the Troll Warlord. And he made the only survivor. And now they can look for this tier 2. Come on, guy. I'm busy at the moment. Jeez. Spamming me in chat while I'm casting. Come on. Either way. Pired, he's going to be pretty happy with that. Going for the BKB early, not opting for any sort of lifesteal. So Roshan, still not on these guys' minds. And I just, I don't understand. So many of these teams, they, they have a lot of opportunities where they could take Roshan, but they don't bother. And, I don't know, I think it's like little opportunities missed. Animage, trying to push out the top lane. Witch Doctor is going to be teeping up there and pushing it out. They did get the one, the tower mid. And, I'm going to look to back off. At Neris, he's eh, moving through the jungle. Pretty, he's the lowest net worth on the board. Poor five roll Skyrath Mage. I know the feels, buddy. Sometimes there's not a lot you can do. Oh, might ever run in with the five roll Lich. Nope, not gonna happen. Anti Mage is there though. They're gonna spot him out. He's got a Yasha. Oh, farming pretty aggressively. Maybe what well, might see him go for the uh, the Vlads. Maybe, maybe not. It depends how early he wants to fight. Either way, Axe. Hasn't got anything after the Blink Dagger. No Vanguard on the way. Crimson Guard. Blade Mail or what be it. But nonetheless, we're going to keep 
moving on. Death Prophet should have that Yules. No, not quite. Went for the bought the recipe instead. Must have been about to die and bought what she could. 300 gold away from the Yules and she'll have it. Troll Warlords almost got the BKB. 500 some away from that. And at that point, there's not a lot they can do to control him. They've got the Axe, Call, and that's about it. And he'll run right through those two supports. And whichever one, whoever doesn't get Shallow Grave is just going to get hacked down by these Axes from the Troll Warlord. Meanwhile, Animage still still pushing away. Doing a good job of it as well. Cutting the Creep Wave. Pushing very aggressively, which, I mean, at this point, he has to. His Tier 3s are starting to get pushed. He needs to try and rotate them out. Death Prophet pops her ulti, now level 2. Doing, having significantly more ghosts and going to do a lot more damage. Troll sieging from the low ground. The ghosts as well. And there's no way they can really go in this. Puck's going to throw it an orb. The Axe goes in with a beautiful blink call. Gets a couple of hicks to drive the bat, but no one's dead yet. And Axe goes down. Ravage connects on the other three. They're looking to finish him off. Skyrath Mage, he's going to drop. Puck, very low. Not going to go down, but it's the Dazzle that drops. Instead, it's a 3 for nil. Still, the Tide Hunter alive. Gets killed by the orb from a distance. Troll still standing strong. And... The ghosts are slowly returning. Death Prophet's now full health. The Witch Doctor's sitting there healing everybody up. That level 2 heal doing a good job. Puck goes in with a silence. Throws out the coil. Oh! Almost gets killed. The troll doing so much damage. Fortunately, just living. Puck took a lot of damage. They're almost picked off by Crypt Swarm. Now they're going to TP out. Mid, 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 Rax, mid melee Rax has gone down. Andy Mage was able to pick off the tier 2 bottom. Unfortunately, rotated back through too slow and wasn't able to find any pickoff kills. It said he's chasing very aggressively. They want this Witch Doctor. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get him. Maybe they will. The orb through. Coconut comes through. Silence. Uh, doesn't even need it. Anime just blinks forward and gets him with the Mana Void. Now maybe they look for the counter push. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. And so uh, Death Prophet's... Got, picks up the Vitality Booster as well as the Yule's right off the bat. So some a good effective items. Puck. Oh, Haste Rune. Not going to matter. That he's silenced. Going to be able to just walk away. Not too worried about that. And Troll. What has he got coming out to him? He's got a Morbid Mask finally after that BKB. Which 10 second cooldown now on that. It's going to be very tanky and very tough to deal with. And go for the Solo Roche if he wants to. We'll kind of have to see. Gonna go up high ground. Eh, I'm not gonna bother with it. We'll see if they go go he get the Roshan and then maybe uh they're just gonna go for the anti mage. Maybe maybe not. Troll goes into the pit finally. Looks like there was a little bit of indecision. He just kind of decided on it. They didn't even shadow blade in, but I'm not too sure they can contest. Ravage uh, up in 30. Death Prophet's ulti is up in six though, so they don't. They'd have to get a beautiful call and two kills underneath call almost in order to uh. Make it happen. Troll, bring down the Roshan pretty quick. Keeping them, keeping the bashes up, doing a decent amount of damage, but not the fastest Trevors. They don't have any sort of minus armor that they're throwing out. Tide Hunter not using that Gush, and Troll doesn't have a Desolator or anything like that. Going to be able to finish off Roshan, and with this, they can look to either go like that, or maybe down from here. But we'll see. They smoke underneath a Radiant Ob's Ward. And uh, as far as no pings came out from that, they probably just mentioned it. Oh, they smoked and smoked at Roche. Maybe they're just going to smoke up the mid lane, look for a couple kills, and end. We'll see how aggressive they want to go. They do have the Aegis. Tidehunter's there. He's got a blink. Doesn't use it. As the smoke breaks. Shadowblade from the troll. He's going to walk up high ground. Going to spot him out. Eh, looks like they're just going to push in the creeps. And they're just going to kind of walk up high ground. Mystic Flare comes out. Not going to really do a whole lot, troll. Gonna take some damage here. Gonna get Dream Coil. Connects onto three. The Ravage comes out at the same time as the Lich ulti. It bounces through doing a lot of damage. Troll almost dropping. Not gonna spend that Aegis. So far, it's a five-man wipe inside the base. Double kill for the Troll. Death Prophet doing so much damage to that ulti. A beautiful Ravage from the Tide. And all in all, Troll doesn't even lose the Aegis. And I'm not surprised there's no GG. The Royal Knights, they gotta hang in this. This is, of course, the final game. Tide under Oh, almost dying. Witch Doctor keeping him alive. There's no buyback. So oh, Axe does have one. Tidehunter's got to be careful. He doesn't get blink dunked. Call comes out, and that's going to be the death of Troll. Fortunately, staying a little too long, and the Axe gets another kill. He brings down two, so the buyback is definitely worth it, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. They're going to lose a tier four. You know what? That might have been what they needed. They're going to lose a one tier four, but I don't think they can do anything else. So Axe, with a great personal effort, comes in. 
Gets two kills. Very important kills. I'm not sure what the troll was doing tanking the tier 4s. Uh, he had no reason to. He's already used his Aegis. He could have just backed off and been healed up by the Witch Doctor, but instead he's sitting there melee range on them, do taking a lot of damage. So, a little bit risky there. And I think that was a uh, maybe a misuse, especially considering the troll died again. They needed to honestly get a little bit more. They got a range racks, which is basically conceded anyway, in a tier 4, which there's still two tier 2 standing, so... You have to be careful that they don't rush down there. They need to spend the next two Death Prophet ultis going for these outer towers. There and there. And once they've got those, then they can maybe look to push in either the... Uh, maybe push in mid, take a team fight, and then rotate bottom or top, depending on what they need to. So I think they should... They can. I think they're still strong enough where they can fight without the Aegis. So over the next couple minutes, go and take the Tier 2s. And then once they've got those down, then they can switch out and rotate in get Roshan and maybe push for another set of racks somewhere is what they need to do. Troll can just keep farming up. He's going for the crit stick. So not a terrible item at all by any means, but cheap cost effective does a lot of damage. All in all, I'd say good stuff. But he's got that helm now, but it doesn't look like that's their thought. Death Prophet's almost got her heart, and shes they're just grouping up going mid again, and they're going to get split pushed out. Dazzle's pushing up bottom, and the Anti-Mage is top with the Puck. Puck's already keeping out. Anti-Mage has one as well. He's going to blink away. Death Prophet's just going to walk high ground, has her ulti up if she wants it, and, oh man, this is risky. Axe goes in, blinks forward, doesn't get a call off, and he's going to get, oh man, he's going to get bursted down. Beautiful Ravage comes out on a three, and the Witch Doctor throws down his ulti. They take down the Scarlet Mage, the Dazzle goes down, unable to grave somebody, and that's going to be game. So, a little, I would say misplayed, unfortunately, by Royal Knights. They're not able to get a whole lot. Puck throws out the ore, but... That might be it. Death Prophet? Uh, Yules comes out of the troll. Animage is there. You might as well go in. And let's all, it's not going to connect anything. Animage goes forward. He's trying to burst him down. Doing a lot of damage. Gets a big mana void off. Brings down two. Now looking for the troll warlord. Troll, is he going to drop? No, he doesn't. He fades just in time. Puck not able to kill. Animage looking, blinking forward. He needs one more hit. There it is. He brings down. Brings down with a triple kill. Now... Oh, Orb, is it going to connect? No, it's not. Puck draws forward. Animage with an ultra kill off the back of that. Oh, my goodness. And what a mana void that was. Bringing down the tide. Oh, the Puck manages to chase down the troll. It's a full five-man wipe coming off of the Ancient. Ancient was down to about two-thirds health. And man, oh, man. That is a brutal swing. Unfortunately, I missed the big one. But that's going to be a huge dip in the gold graphs heading back to zero. Look at that. Straight up. Andy Mage got so much farm from that. He's got 5k gold in the bank. Can pretty much do whatever he wishes with it. Like, if he picks up a butterfly right now, I don't think that there's anything that they can they can really do to kill him. He'll be able to burst down the Death Prophet so quick. It'll be disgusting. But, I mean, she, well, she does have a heart now, but no armor. So it's... Kind of a, it'll be it'll be interesting whether they can do what what happens there. Roshan's gonna be a long respawn, it looks like. Five minutes fifty five seconds, so when you do not gonna respawn until but there. Either way. Axe. Looks like he's going for the uh the hood of defiance. The going for a hood after the cloak. Oh, interesting plays nonetheless. Witch Doctor now has his egg, so Maybe they look to go again, try again, something along those lines. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's pretty risky, though. They gave up a lot when they fed away those kills. Like, look at look at that. That gold swing. Over almost 6k gold. Or, sorry, experience. The net worth, uh, about 2,500. No, that's more than that. That's almost, that's almost 5k. I think this line is 10,000. So, they gave up 5k and 6k experience. Almost all directly to that anti-mage. He's got 6,200 gold in the bank. I mean... Zero, man. This guy coming out, pulling out and performing in the the moments. And now it's uh, DG's turn to pause, so... Looks like they're having a bit of an issue. Technical difficulties. But that's alright. There's been pauses on both sides and gives us a sec to take stock of the game, so... What... DG need to do is they need to stop running mid. They've, I, I don't know why they bothered going, trying just to keep going mid. If they had just rotated through and taken out the tier twos, calm, cooled, and collected like, they would have been able to just to, you know, even if anti mage is pushing out here, 
go and just push this one in, take the tier two, push forward, force the fight. They win the fight, maybe take the racks if they uh, if it kind of trades even, they just back off. Maybe go top, push out that one again. Then if they win another fight, or then they can just slow siege in lane of racks, have the creeps push up middle. Even if anti mage is trying to split push them, they can kind of do whatever they wish. Are they trying to smoke up again? Looks like maybe, maybe not. Not too sure. It's coming out onto the crow. And Wait, what's on the crow? Ugh, they've got a smoke coming on the crow, but they're not going to be able to do a whole lot. So a little bit of mis mis crow micro there. Troll now has his uh, crit stick. Anti mage, what are you going to buy, buddy? It's just going to go. Oh, eh, it's actually not a bad choice. And buys a BKB. Going to be immune to the coconuts. The only thing that can stop him now is the bash. Can can uh, manta out of the silence if he needs to, and then he can BKB the ravage and uh, a lot of the other damage coming out. So Let's see what they want to go. Looks like the die radiant want to smoke up as well. They're waiting for. The puck to get here, and this could be a smoke into a smoke. We'll see. I don't sitting very far forward. They're going to have to be careful with that. Troll Warlord, he's here. Oh, he's going to pop the puck smoke. Puck's going to blink away. They're pinging him out. They know where he is. They also see the Witch Doctor. What is the Radiant seeing right now? That's what they got. Smoke popped by the Witch Doctor. Uh, right as the Axe Sword, he gets a call into three. And Mystic Flare comes out. Lots of spins from the Axe. So far, it's a double kill. The huge Mount Void doing a lot of damage. Scarf Mage goes down. Dazzle still alive. Kept alive. The Lich Ulti doing a lot of work, though. Troll now going man mode up against the Anti Mage. He needs a bash. Is he going to get them? He needs another bash quick. Oh, he doesn't get it, but it doesn't matter. He wins the fight. Two buybacks come up from the Puck and the Sky Wrath. Anti Mage holding on to his. Probably a good call. They don't need it yet. They're going to be able to force them back. And that is a 3 for 5 in favor of... DG, but two buybacks forced and they're not able to go get any objectives off it. Troll buys, picks up an invis rune and you're going to have to push out the bottom lane. No rush for it yet, guys. So, a little bit unfortunate. Oh, man. Meanwhile, they got to watch out for these creeps. They're taking out the safety structures and they're starting to chip on the ancient. Puck's got to clean these off and uh, looks like he's going to do that. Didn't take a lot of damage here, unfortunately, and have to back off. Ancient brought down low, though. And that is one problem they're going to have to have whenever the, another lane is pushed. And I think, I hope DG is realizing this, that they have to try and push a different lane. They can't keep trying to push mid. But Warlord's still standing strong, though. Looks like he's going to buy out, going for the Daedalus. Once the, uh, once the big crit stick here. Wants to be able to do all of the dips. But we'll, we'll see if it works out for him. Tide still working on that Refresh Orb. Quite a ways off still. Or halfway there. If Prophet's got a Mystic Staff, I assume it's a Shiva's. Animage picks up a Basher of his own. Now looking can now look to contest that troll as far as mad fights go, but that spends his buyback. He won't have it for a moment here. He's gonna have to get a couple kills within the in the fight in order to get it. But we'll have to see. So far he's been getting off fantastic mana voids, doing a lot of damage. As well as stopping the Witch Doctor ulti. I believe that's been him. And he's just going to go through and clean up some of the wolves. Troll Warlord, he's got his in. He can pop his Shadow Blade if he wants to. They run down here and find the Anti-Mage. Do a lot of work, but again, they're going to... Oh, I guess they're going to find the Dazzle. He's going to be dead. There's not a lot he can do. Troll can switch to range and just finish him off. Oh, the Dream Coil connects. Troll breaks it. Dazzle still alive. Hobbling away. Slowed down quite a bit, though. And... Oh, Anchor Smash missed. Death Prophet's there with a the right click, though. So Warlord going very aggressive, goes forward, looking for the bash, pops the blade mail, and that's going to be the it for the axe. A full four-man ravage, they finish off the Sky of Mage, Anti Mage, no buyback, Pox is BKB, looking to go. He's going to have to blink away. The Witch Doctor all doing too much damage, and now I think this might be the end, finally. The Royal Knights, they've been putting up a good fight so far. Can they defend one more time? He's going for the Mana Void, unfortunately he's not going to get off, and that's no buyback. Puck's going to go down as well. That's all five dead. That's going to be GG. Well played coming out in favor of Dynasty Gaming. So an impressive series and a uh, kind of a scary win. Not the most convincing, but nonetheless, they pull it out. And Dynasty Gaming, they're going to move on. Unfortunately, that's it for Royal Knights. They have now been eliminated from Winter War 2015. The first team I've watched actually be eliminated, unfortunately. And so, sad to see them go. But uh, nonetheless, hopefully they'll do well in future tournaments.